the, we're at the Kansas Coliseum. Not a whole lot of folks here. It's usually a bigger crowd when the steamers come to town. Wichita lost their most recent home game when Dallas came in here and beat them the other night. And a look at the Western Division standings indicates that this is a very important game tonight. The Wings have two games in hand on the steamers. St. Louis starting tonight behind San Diego by two games. And the Wings are a game back tied with Kansas City. And as you can see, Tacoma, a winner the other night, is only a slim half game back of the powerful Sockers with L.A. off to a slow start so far. That's the Western Division. In the East, it is a dogfight at the top as well. Look at that. Just a game separating the top three teams with Minnesota, Baltimore, and Pittsburgh going at it. And then Cleveland right in the hunt. Dallas breaking a three-game losing streak by winning here Saturday. And Willie Roy in Chicago off to a nightmare of a start. Only one out of seven so far. So we set the stage for this one again by repeating that Ricky Davis is not here. He has a dislocated toe. Duncan McEwen has an ingrown toenail and could not play tonight. And Redmond Lane tore a thigh muscle the other night at San Diego. He is not here. A couple of rookies in the lineup. We'll see how much they play. And Tony Bellinger is starting on defense. He's got it from Don Ebert and Stuart Lee on the kickoff. Steamers in their, actually their home whites here on the road. Going from right to left. Wichita likes to play in their orange uniforms at home. To give the folks a look at the colorful uniforms. And they also like to promote their souvenir line by doing down the slot, faking a shot, right side, Borja! Oh, what a save by Slobo. <laughs> a corner kick for Wichita. Our fans watching at home, Bob, will have a perfect angle on this one. He had Oh, that save. ball was right in the corner, and Slobo knocked it out. Excellent. I mean, Slobo is some kind of an athlete. How he has reflexes that quick is just beyond me. But also, at the same time, Chico Borja... Borja is showing you why he has so many goals this year. This guy can really cream that ball. He's only been out there 20 seconds. Two good chances were scoreless from Wichita. This is St. Louis Steamer. One of the reasons is the great play of Slobo against Chico Borja. Oh, he definitely, definitely kept St. Louis in the game in the first half just with two shots by Borja that he made extensively outstanding saves on. And at the other end, Jan Olison. The young man for Wichita from Denmark has been tough stopping the steamers as well. This was a three-on-two, and St. Louis couldn't put it away. It was actually four-on-two as Carl Rose's shot was hugged at the post. Check it, that was Greg Makowski in the left wing. Hugged on the post by Olison, who showed some unbelievable foot skills. Slobo is the top keeper in the league at 3.35, just ahead of Zoltan Kulp of San Diego. The Orange Army is out in force tonight. Boy, they hate the steamers here, don't they? Mm. They've, got a, they've got a Sink the Steamers t-shirt. And they just popped all those balloons at one time. Ronald Klein with American Optical. He's in the contact lens business out of Webster Groves. We'd like to say hello to his wife, Jan, or his wife, Nina. I'm sorry, I better get that right. <laughs> his wife, Nina, and his son, Travis, watching at home tonight. He stopped by before the game and asked us to say hello to his family back home. And nice to see some St. Louis folks up here in Wichita. Jimmy Walters with a steal on the penalty killing unit. Mike Fox on the right wing against Daryl Duran to the corner. Daryl can't stop him. Fox trying to angle to the goal. And finally Duran got him. Back to Slobo. And the Steamers have 40 seconds left. Very, very shortly. I myself had an operation to take the cartilage out many, many years ago, and I was out of action for like eight months. Wow. That's tough for a gazelle to be out that long. That's right, brother. Up the middle. Look at Jan Olison. He may score. He did. I can't believe it. He did. And this place is going crazy. And you can see why they believe that this guy is an outstanding athlete. And they say he has great foot skills, as good as maybe anybody on an exhibition that would prove a statement like that. Here he goes. He breaks through. Three defenders. Draws Slobo to the near post. Slobo's caught with the legs wide open, and the ball goes right underneath him. Unbelievable. I don't, Bob, I don't think anybody took him seriously. This place is going crazy. Jan Olison, his first goal of the year. It's the first time I've ever seen a goalkeeper score. I know it's happened before, but not too many times. But What's wrong with that move? Boy, Wichita cheated and got away with it on the restart. Here's Mike Fox shooting, deflected. And it's just wide. Gomez scores! Well, 
Watson. Me and my big mouth. Schemer's got caught ball watching, Bob. Yes, sir. Me and my big mouth, though. I had to put the hex on him. I had to say Gomez didn't look good. Lo and behold, what does he do? He comes back, makes me look like a fool by pumping one into the far corner past Lobo. There's the ball rebounding off, off of Gerald Duran, over onto the left foot of Gomez. Gomez puts it in the far corner. Globo had no chance on it whatsoever. True, Gomez didn't have to work very hard for that ball. It was presented to him in a perfect place to find the back of the net, and he made no mistake on it. And we're down 2 nothing, and things have definitely taken a turn for the worse in so far as the steamers are concerned. Two goals in a minute 14 for Wichita. Gomez, his third goal of the year, and the 100th goal of his MIA for Christensen. Duran hustling to keep it in play. Ball centered. Pace on. Oh. Yes. Diego. <laughs> and credit that one, folks, to Daryl Duran. He fought for the ball on the left wing board, centered it, and Diego is right there to hammer it home. Pesa with his sixth goal of the year. Unbelievable, the power from this young man, Diego Pesa. We were talking earlier about Chico Borja, and I made a note down here on my pad. Here it is again. Ball comes out from the side from Duran, and, Bo and uh, Diego Pesa just times it perfectly, and it's Powder City. Look at this, non-hesitation, whammo, and no no way to stop that ball. Goodbye. Two on the score. Steamers on the scoreboard now, and that was very important for them to get on the board before halftime. On the right wing, off the Wichita kickoff. Gomez, top of the circle. Look out, boarding guard here to his right. Marking up is Sammy Bick. Out on top for Kevin Culey. To his right, and back to boarding guard with 2.35 left in the half. That was Pesa, his sixth of the year. Daryl Duran's team-leading seventh assist at 12 over for the rest of the half. Now the clock says 10 seconds. Here comes Christensen. Right side, Rodvet. Five seconds. Three. Two, one, and the shot, and Sammy Dick blocks it, and that's the end of the first half as the wings look a little nonchalant with very little time remaining. So a very interesting first half of play. After 30 minutes, it's the Wichita Wings 2 and the St. Louis Steamers 1, and from the Kansas Coliseum, this is St. Louis Steamers Soccer. Jack it off! You see, Marty Templin has a second job that of a part-time referee in the major indoor soccer league. This year, he will work about 40 games, trying to make order out of chaos, trying to keep his cool when everyone around him is losing theirs. At times, it can be a tough way to make a buck. I'm a very big backer of the game of soccer, and I think the game of soccer itself needs uh, to continue growing if we're gonna be a number one sport in, in the United States. So we have to be good, and I think I myself enjoy it because I couldn't cut the grade as maybe a, a top flight pro player, but this is my part to you know put a little back into the game. The game of soccer has been a part of Marty Templin's life ever since he was old enough to first kick a ball. This former goalkeeper was a star at St. Mary's High School with the Kudus amateur teams and back during the days of the American Soccer League, a semi-pro circuit that fielded teams in St. Louis and other cities. To make extra money, he began officiating high school games back in the early 1970s. Today, he is one of the most respected officials in the MISL, and last year was honored by being selected to officiate in the league's all-star game. When they're sitting on five fouls, make sure Ken knows that the white team is sitting on five, the visiting team is sitting on five. And then as soon as they do sit on five, the very next foul that that team commits, as soon as we blow a whistle and give the direction, and you know that you blow your whistle. A referee's job begins long before the first ball is ever kicked. Before each and every game, Templin and his fellow officials meet to discuss what potential problems await them on a particular evening. The men who wear the MISL referee's jersey are fully aware of the responsibilities that come with it. And when it's time to go to work and they walk out onto the field, they know they must be ready for just about anything. I couldn't get out of the way! 
Referees are not the ones that put the ball in the net. Referees are not the ones that stop the balls from going in the net. Um, if they put the ball in the back of the net more times, they're going to win. Um, the referees make mistakes, yes, and constructive criticism, the referees are open to take from anybody, most of the time, if it's done in a proper manner. Marty, I think, is generally accepted by the players, and Marty is a talker. He talks to the players and tries to dissipate problems. Uh, you know, again, difficulty for the referee is not only the foul discrimination, but the man management of the game, and I think this is what separates the men from the boys, and I think Marty qualifies in that regard. The men who blow whistles in the MISL, men like Marty Templin, realize that for the most part, they're in a no-win situation. Indoor soccer is, by design, a game of non-stop action and emotion. Officials are forced to make instantaneous decisions, judgment calls that bring upon them the wrath and fury of both fans and players. At times, being an official can seem like a very thankless and very isolated job. And at times, it is. In the middle of a big brouhaha on the field where players are screaming and fans are screaming, have you ever said to yourself, Marty, what am I doing here? What have I gotten myself into? <laughs> well, you know, I guess maybe in the back of your mind, you, I guess we probably have all said that. Uh, you know, why am I doing this? You know, I, I could be at home with the family, you know, uh, playing with the kids or something like that and would have to hassle with this. But uh, for every one incident like that, there's maybe 10 games that go by and there's not a problem. And, People, you know, you've got players, coaches, and owners come up to you and say, hey, thank you, good job, you know, glad to see you, hope to see you again. So for every bad game, there's 10 good ones. To help escape the pressures of the game, Marty Templin likes to spend time with his family. The long nights on the road, the screaming fans, the bad calls, they're all forgotten when the kids show daddy the latest song learned on the piano. But they're not forgotten for long. The guy's attacking down in the corner. He throws in the corner down and hits the high glass and stays on. Come on, how can that be delayed? If it was way up, it would have went to the side. Officiating in the major indoor soccer league. It can be a lonely, thankless job. But for Marty Templin, it's a challenge. As he says, an opportunity to put something back into the game of soccer. A game that over the years has been and continues to be such a large part of this man's life. There's times where you go, why? But then there's more times you say, boy, I come off the field and wow, that was good. That was good stuff. And you come off the field, not saying just so much good stuff for us, but the game was good stuff. You know, the game was good. It was exciting. Um, and it was fun to be part of it. For being our halftime guest, Budweiser is proud to present Marty Templin with a Budweiser Seiko watch. Information on the purchase of Budweiser logoed merchandise is available to you by calling this toll-free number during normal business hours. Tonight, when the opposing goalkeeper scores one against you guys, uh, that's a bizarre play, and I, for one, have never seen that before in the major indoor soccer league. No, I haven't either, Jim, and you know, it never ceases to amaze me the weird things that happen to this ball club when we come and play at the Kansas Coliseum. Three years ago, Kim Ronvet headed one into a net from midfield, and tonight the goalkeeper runs all the way up the field, beats three of our guys, and scores. Just unbelievable. But it was a good first half, and let's check some of the highlights with Wichita leading by a score of 2-1. Here's the goal by Olison as he beats Greg Villa, then Carl Rose, and everybody really expected him, as Bob Keogh said earlier, to lay the ball off. Well, Slobo came out and set up a little bit too late and right through his legs and Wichita led 1-0 at 3.58 of the first quarter of play. And then it was only a minute 14 later when Mike Fox made a fine play. Here he waxed one that hits Daryl Duran and running onto it in the right wing is Omar Gomez. Left footing it very nicely and placing it to the far post. His third of the year at 5.12. Wings two and the steamers nothing. Just about seven minutes later some unbelievable work on the left wing boards by Daryl Duran. He just simply dug the ball away from Steve Weggerly. It actually hit Weggerly in the back, or rather, this is Christensen. And then finally, the ball comes over for Diego. Half volley, upper right-hand corner for the shooter. Diego, six of the year. And so the Steamers got on the scoreboard and trailed 2-1 after 30 minutes to play. 
And I don't know what to expect in the second half. We'll just have to wait and see what happens, Jimmy, but a good ball game so far. Well, you know, maybe Slobo can come back and score a goal to tie this game up <laughs> right early in the second quarter, and we can then go on and take it from there. Thanks a lot, Mr. Carpenter. We'll talk to you later. All right. Draw a level in this game, and we need to do this very, very badly. This is the shot in the arm that I was talking about earlier on. Uh, we need to regain that confidence, and there's nothing like building that confidence when you see the ball go in the back of that net. And it just gives you that extra shot of adrenaline that you need, you know, to carry on for the rest of the night and makes you want to do it again and again. But... This, you know, even though it comes short-handed, now you've got to capitalize on it. You cannot let these things pass. So, come on, Steve, let's make it go. Omar Gomez decided to take a drink. Yeah, he is looking like he's put on a little bit of weight during the offseason. Gomez here on two 10-day contracts coming from Argentina. They say around Christmas he will head back home, be with his family, and play down there. He is definitely heavier, yeah. No questioning his talent as a soccer player. Yeah, but his weight is bad. He may have to apply for group insurance. Oh. oh. Sorry, it just popped into my head. <laughs> There's <laughs> Duran from Mikowski. Power play. Shooting. Oh. oh, it hit the crossbar and came straight down. Michael Fox trying to clear it away. Oh, what a shot by the face. Almost found the upper corner. Giveaway. Oh, yeah. Score. Stuart Lee on a giveaway by Wichita. Unassisted power play goal. And the Steamers have leveled it. And Stuart Lee waves to the crowd. He used to be a Wichita wing. And Stuart Lee capitalized on a mistake in the defense on an errant pass. And I believe it was by Kim Ronfed. There he is. Ronfed with the ball. He plays it out. Lee runs onto it. Anticipated well and put it in with the left foot into the upper hand corner, upper right hand corner. And uh, Olison had no chance. Now there's the thing we were talking about. Now the now the impetus is with us. Now now we've got the momentum going our way. And if we can just keep that attitude and, and go after it. Stuart Lee is second of the year unassisted on the power play at 6.38. It only took the steamers 19 seconds to equalize. Bellinger, left wing, Stuart Lee with it. Through the legs of Rowe, back to Duran. Two seconds left. Darrell plays it in. It's too late. And the third quarter comes to an end. And Omar Gomez is going to get a penalty. Right at the whistle, Omar Gomez put Don Ebert into the boards. And he's going to get a two-minute penalty. And that's probably the most unnecessary foul for a penalty we've seen all year. Chico Borja really hurt his team there, Bob. And that's a big break for the Steamers. That'll probably come at the 15 minutes minute mark of the third period Gomez complaining Borja will be in the penalty box for two minutes and the young man made a very poor choice oh it was just I mean there was absolutely no call for it here it is look at this he definitely played the man and I'll tell you what that was that's a little catch-up that's a little payback to Don Ebert for early on in the game when Borja was on his back with Slobo holding the ball in his midsection and Ebert held him down not not with any force but just a restraining move and Borja for that. What's interesting, the referee near the plate did not call a penalty, but Bill Maxwell on the other side of the field did. Fourth quarter coming up, we're tied 2-2, Steamers in the power play, and this is St. Louis Steamers soccer. Lee and Ebert crisscrossing in front, watched by Terry Rowe and Kim Rundbeck. Long shot, score! Deflected by Stuart Lee as Mikowski hit it from the point. Lee in the slot, deflected it into the net, and the Steamers lead 3-2 with their second power play goal of the night. And it didn't take them long either, about 35, 40 seconds to do it. I don't know whether that was a design play, but the face, Greg Mikowski, there he goes. He hammers one, and cutting across the, the box is Stuart Lee, who deflects the ball to the back of the net behind Olison, who had no chance whatsoever. No way you can react on a ball like that unless it's hit right at you. So the steamers jump out in front for the first time tonight, three to two. But as I remarked earlier, this is the this is the momentum we're after. This is the confidence we're looking for. But remember, one goal lead in indoor soccer means absolutely nothing. Gets it back to Slobo. Left side for Duran. Oh. Ronfed puts. He's got him again. Ronfed puts Duran into the boards, and Ronfed's going to the penalty box one more time. And, Durant. and Daryl Duran's in the face of Kim Ronfed. Slobo gets him out of there. Daryl, don't get a penalty yourself. Duran is furious. I mean, he's livid. But well, but Runfed, I'll tell you, tried to put it in that penalty box right across the floor and just mashed into Duran. You know, you're talking about a possible career-ending injury right there. Runfed, that's twice tonight. The two of the, the uh, Wichita wings have really lost it. I mean, totally lost control themselves, which is highly unusual for professional players like this. Well, Runfed was in full stride. He really came at him. 
in hockey that's charging or boarding, and it'll probably be boarding here. Very unusual to see Kim Rumpa do something like that. He's a super player, yes, it is unusual, I'll say that. He is an outstanding player. And he gets a yellow card because that's his second penalty. Three yellow cards for the Wings tonight. One to Rundved, one to Borja, and one to Coach Roy Turner. And now we have a timeout called maybe by Pat McBride to discuss power play strategy. One way to win on the road is to have more players on the field than the home team does most of the time, and the Seamers have had that. We'll be back in a moment. 3-2 St. Louis from the Kansas Coliseum. This is St. Louis. Came right back out. Rundved again. Gets it from his keeper. Straight ahead, Gomez. Right side, Borja. Off the foot of Tony Bellinger, and we're tied right into the net. It hit Tony B. A power play goal for Wichita. Well, I can empathize with Tony B. In years past in my career, I've had that very same thing happen to me. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. The ball was very well hit by Borja. Very hard. Tony B back on defense, trying to adjust to the shot. The ball hits him in the leg. In it goes. What are you going to do? I mean, uh, there's not a whole lot you can do. That ball's coming at a terrific rate of speed. No way he can control that ball. Well, so our, our inability to cash in on a couple of our own penalty plays uh, has come back to haunt us indeed. But by the same token, I don't mean to say that we were all that bad on it because we did manage to get two of them in. The game is still not over. Let's see what's going to happen. Come on with the new ball game. Come on, you steamer. Borja, number 14. Gomez's his first assist at 11-17. Here comes Weggerly down the left wing. Makowski cut him off. Gatchatori running court. Jeff turning toward the goal. Oh, yes. Good goal. Oh, yes. A shot of the by Olison. Gatchatori again in front. Duran. Bellinger leaves it for him. Darrell had it taken away. Borja, three on one. Right down the middle. Shooting. Oh. And a goal. Well, what a shame. Darrell Duran got a little too fancy at the other end. And Wichita makes it hurt. What a terrible shame. Two and two instances. What a terrible shame that we were denied at the far end of the field by the just outstanding effort on the part of Jeff Cacciatore. And then what a shame that Darrell let that ball get away from him. Borja made no mistake. He was a very intent young man as he zeroed in on Slobo Olieski. Made him commit himself, and when he did, he split it right on by. And this game, with those other 30 seconds to go, will be over unless the steamers can do something about it. 30 seconds against a very polished Wichita team. Unfortunate for us tonight. We were hot and cold. Again, it's not over, but still unfortunate. We played well enough. We could have won. Wichita was not all that great either, but we could have won this game. Again, it's still not over. They're going to pull Globo out of the goal. Carl, Carl Rose is going to go in for the final 30 seconds. We'll have the man advantage, and let's see if we can press it home. Got to do it quickly. See what a shame. It's got to be a disappointment for all the steamer players, as well as the coaches, Pat McBride, Tony Glavin, and, of course, for all of us followers, too. However, let's see what we can do in the next 30 seconds. Unassisted goal. Borja, second of the night, 15th of the year at 14.30. Steamers have Carl Rose on as the second attacker. Left side for Makowski. At the point, shooting, and it's out of play. Well, will the Steamers lose five in a row on the road? Starting to look like it. Boy, when you don't cash in your power plays, Steamers did earlier in the night, but they needed one of those two power plays early in the fourth quarter, and they might have been able to put this one away. Long ball to midfield, headed into the crowd by Makowski. Four seconds off the clock, 16 remain. Kick in Wichita. They're not the kind of team that's going to give it away too much in this situation because they have such great ball skills. No, they won't. Up over the top, Mike Fox left wing. Carl Rose pressuring Tim Walters. Rose against Timmy, who knocked him down, but Rose has it. Eight seconds left. Oh, Carl got crushed. is elated with their win. So are their fans. They're really, really behind them here. Steamers, of course, 
realize, yeah, we had it in our hand, we could have won it. I don't mean to imply by that now that we gave this thing away. Please don't misunderstand me. Teamers tried very, very hard. You cannot capitalize on every power play goal, and we all know that. Just an, just an unfortunate thing for us tonight. We could have won the game, but it wasn't in the book. Wichita, 4-3 over the Steamers. Hard-earned victory for Roy Turner's team. There's your final. Timmy Walters and Slobo, the former teammates, walking off together. And the Steamers have now lost five in a row on the road. From the Kansas Coliseum, this is St. Louis Steamers soccer.